Hey guys, for biochemistry tutorials, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon to get instant notification of my new video. In this video, I am going to explain radio immunoassay. The points will be introduction, principle, procedure, types, uses and advantages and disadvantages of radio immunoassay. So let's start. This technique was first developed by Rosalind Yellow and Solomon Burson in 1960. The first substance estimated by this technique was insulin. For this, Rosalind won the Nobel Prize in 1977. Next point is principle. As the name implies, Radio immunoassay is the combination of radioactivity of isotopes and immunological reactions of antigen and antibody. Next we will see procedure. Suppose we want to quantitate sample having antigen X. For this we should have three things. First radio label antigen X of fixed quantity. We will describe it as orange triangle. For labeling, we can use iodine 125 or iodine 131 which are gamma emitter or tritium which is beta emitter. Second thing we should have is antibody against antigen X again which is of a fixed quantity. And the third thing we should have is unlabeled antigen X which is of variable quantity. We will describe it as blue triangle. With these three things we are going to make standard reference curve. It can be done by two way. The first one is solid phase radio immunoassay and second is liquid phase radio immunoassay we will see solid phase radio immunoassay to make standard reference curve take series of tubes generally sephiros beads are used now fixed quantity of antibodies against antigen x are immobilized in sephiros beads which covalently linked with it in first bead, saturating amount of radio labeled antigen X are added. Beads are then centrifuged and washed, and the radioactivity of antigen antibody complexes retained in the beads is measured. Let's take this as 100%. In second bead, add fixed quantity of radio labeled antigen X with unlabeled antigen X, just for example. 1 nanogram. Labeled and unlabeled antigen molecules compete for the antibody. Then after centrifuge and wash the bead and then check radioactivity of antigen antibody complex retained in the beads. Let's say it's a 90%. Then in third bead with radio labeled antigen X add unlabeled antigen X say 2 nanogram. And after same procedure, let's say radioactivity is 80%. With 3 nanogram of unlabeled antigen, radioactivity of antigen antibody complex is 70%. Now let's make a table with variable quantity of unlabeled antigen X with radioactivity of antigen antibody complex. Without unlabeled antigen, the radioactivity was 100%, with 1 nanogram it was 90%, with 2 nanogram it's 80%, with 3 nanogram it was 70% and so on. With increasing amount of unlabeled antigen, the radioactivity of antigen antibody complexes are decreasing. 
Now make a graph with this table having radioactivity of antigen antibody complex on y axis and amount of unlabeled antigen x on x axis. The graph will be in decreasing order as radioactivity is decreasing with increase of unlabeled antigen x concentration. Now with the same procedure if we know the radioactivity of sample then we can get the concentration of antigen x in sample. In liquid phase radioimmunoassay antibodies are not coated. After antigen antibody complexes are formed it is precipitated by second antibody against the first one and then radioactivity is measured. Next uses of radioimmunoassay. This technique is used to measure hormones, growth factors, tumor markers, bacterial antigens and cytokines. Next advantages. This technique has high specificity because of antigen antibody reaction and it has high sensitivity because of radioactivity. We can measure the concentration of a substance in nanogram or even in picogram. In disadvantages, because of the strict law only approved lab can do this assay and half-life of commonly used iodine isotope is only 60 days. So that is all about radio immunoassay. If you find this video informative then please do like and share it and also subscribe my channel for more videos on biochemistry. Thank you.